Okay guys, Game of Thrones just published another teaser for its final season, and it officially confirms long-standing leak and theory regarding the battle for Winterfell. The ancestral home of House Stark will fall along with many characters. The Aftermath teaser shows us Winterfell devastated by a major battle. It's not an actual Aftermath, as it's not the actual season 8 footage, but still there's many things we can get out of it. First, we have a Stark banner flap in the wind, it's better than torn. The camera pans wide and we see a completely destroyed inner courtyard of Winterfell. Dragonglass arrows fly around. The camera then pans to the side and we see a Darwolf statue that's guarding the Winterfell crypts. Here's a broken door in the walkway that wraps around the inner courtyard. And now in the midst of all that wreckage we start seeing all these most recognizable items belonging to our favorite characters, abandoned and covered by snow. First we see Tyrion's hand of the Queen Pin that Danny gave to him at the end of season 6, lying on the snow. Next we see a room filled with armor and shields, with our sword needle stuck in the ground. Then we get a shot of the walkway along the battlements, and then the feather from the crypts of Winterfell shows up, the one Robert put in Lyanna Stark's statue way back in Season 1, and the same one Sansa picked in Season 5, so I think this represents Sansa's item, everyone has one. Next we see a broken wheel that belongs to Bran's broken wheelchair. Then there's Jaime Lannister's golden hand right next to Danny's three-headed dragon chain that hangs on a broken wheel which is kind of poetic if you remember Danny's speech about the wheel in season 5 and how she wants to break it. Finally we have Jon Snow's Valyrian steel sword Longclaw. What's interesting here is that Longclaw has blood all over it, and yet the army of the dead does not bleed. At the very end, if you look closely on this shot, you can also see the Night King under Arch walking through the Winterfell gates. So what does all of this mean? Well, first off, this teaser, much like the Crypts of Winterfell teaser from earlier this year, does not contain any actual footage from season 8. It's more of a hint to what's to come. And no, it's not that all these characters whose items we see in the snow will die. They will not, or at least not during the battle for Winterfell. The living will lose Winterfell to the Night King, but almost all the main characters, in fact every main character whose death you think this teaser teased is definitely not going to die. Jon, Danny, Tyrion, Jaime, Sansa, Arya, Bran, none of them are going to die in the battle for Winterfell. The only thing it confirms is that they will lose Winterfell to the Night King, which confirms the long-standing leaked photos of Winterfell set being on fire, and all the lifeless bodies we saw at dawn covered by snow. Some thought Winterfell set was being destroyed on purpose to throw us off, but this is now the official confirmation that Winter will not certainly fall at Winterfell. If you have been following Game of Thrones season 8 news and leaked photos, you know that we already expected this battle, and it's the aftermath or the outcome. We already knew that the big battle for Winterfell is set to take place in Season 8, and it's been confirmed to take place in the third episode of the final season, by an actor who plays the Night King, Vladimir Ferdic. After seven seasons, the Night King has finally breached the wall and is marching his army south. Even though Winterfell will not be the first castle to get destroyed on its path, he will arrive over there by the third episode which is when this epic battle for Winterfell begins. Ferdic let the news slip during a fan convention in Hungary, he said and spoiled in the third episode of the last season, there's a battle that creators intended to be a historic moment in television. Almost the full episode will be about a battle, it'll take about one hour. Ferdic states they filmed this battle for three months in the wind and rain outdoors, and then for another month in a huge studio, which makes this far and away the most labor intensive battle sequence in the show's history, and therefore in the history of TV. I can tell you that there will be no shortage of surprises in season 8, Ferdic continues. There will also be a lot of dragons, the Night King will return, and in the season the biggest battle for the throne will be completed. Entertainment Weekly's cover story from a few months back gave us an inside look into the final Game of Thrones season through the eyes of James Hibbard. It's shaping up to be what probably almost certainly is the longest consecutive battle sequence in cinema history, Hibbard said and continued with, they've looked to try and find other ones out there, like the one in the Two Towers, in the Lords of the Rings, which is about 40 minutes, and in the movie 13 Assassins, which was also around 40 minutes. This is going to be longer than 40 minutes, it's pretty nuts. HBO has also gone all in on sets for season 8, building out the Winterfell set to make it as close to real castle as possible. According to Hibbert, the crew was up to the challenge, they massively expanded the Winterfell set. You can wander around, point the camera at any direction and it shows more Winterfell. One of the directors pointed out that even in a big budget Marvel or Star Wars movie, they usually build what an actors are going to stand directly in front of and fill the rest with green screen. But for this set and a few others as well, they built it as 360 degrees set, so you don't have to fill it with special effects, you don't have to favor one particular angle, you can have cameras follow people around, you can do unusual angles and come up with different things on the day of shooting. So it allows a lot more creativity and it helps the actors, no acting required. 
They're running around these sets, fighting, fake blood on the snow, snow flying everywhere, torches burning, fires and smoke. It feels like you're right there. To film the battle of Winterfell, HBO built an enormous green screen in order to bring their vision of an epic battle to life. So who was gathered there for this week's long shoot? First we got the Unsullied. And the Unsullied are not the only people from Essos who are part of the Battle of Winterfell, they are also the Trekkie Riders. This is of course not coming as a surprise at all, since Danny at the end of season 7 is coming to defend Winterfell and she will arrive there in season 8 premiere. Jor Mormont will command Danny's forces during the battle. Finally there is also a shot that we think is a Norton army, and also there is a Chebyshed on set. We can also see it in the official trailer. Multiple people will wield flaming swords in the battle against the dead. Out of all the characters we know, Beric Nadarion is the only most closely associated with the flaming sword. In the next video we see three people with flaming swords, and they are all on horseback. Seems like Nadarion shared a trick with a few people. So far we only have the official footage of Beric wielding it. Ghost will have a fair amount of screen time, and will most definitely fight at this battle. The last time we saw Ghost, Jon Snow's direwolf, he raised his head off the floor as his master was resurrected from the dead. Sansa mentioned him once in season 7, but he never actually showed up on screen. There was actually a ghost scene written for season 7, but it got cut. That is way too much time to go without sight of Jon's most consistent companion, but according to special effects supervisor Joe Bauer that's all about to change. Or you'll see him again, Bauer told the Huffington Post. He has a fair amount of screen time in season 8, he does show up. As a matter of fact, I think we already saw Ghost in the official trailer, although many people disagree that it's actually him in the background. Anyways, the Night King is coming, but Winterfell and the Living will be ready. Winterfell now has a dark trench all around it, and everyone wields dragonless weapons and shields. The battle for Winterfell will without a doubt be the greatest battle sequence in the television history. This battle is directed by Miguel Sapochnik, the guy behind some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones, like Hearthome, Vince of Winter and Battle of the Bastards. Talking about this huge battle for Winterfell, it's brutal, said star Peter Dinklage Tyrion Lannister. It makes the Battle of the Bastards look like a theme park. Writing earlier about this historic sequence, James Hibbert called it wall to wall action and detailed how it jumps between the stories of several different characters. As you might expect, this battle will leave many dead. Check out this image of lifeless bodies strewn across the ground outside of Winterfell's set at Moneyglass. We can see what looks like a field strewn with bodies to the left of the castle, including some that look like horses. Meanwhile, we also got images of a pile of body parts props outside the castle and of the blood left on the castle walls. As with Moneyglass, the ground at Mangromorn Quarry was littered with bodies. Unlike at Moneyglass, someone was able to get up close and personal with the bodies. There are all kinds of bodies at Mangromorn Quarry. The most surprising bodies were the ones bearing the Kraken sigil of House Greyjoy. I did not expect the Greyjoys to be part of this battle, but if Theon already saved the Ara by episode 3, then I don't see where else they would be. However, it could also be that Euron's surprise attacked Winterfell with the Golden Company, either before or after the Night King attacked it. Anyways, this is more in line with what I was expecting. These skeletal bodies could be bodies of whites, or they could be of people flesh fried by Dragonfire. Next up, Corpse Blobs. HBO likely spreads these things all over the battlefield and covers them in snow. From a distance, they look like a discrete bodies rather than a bunch of bodies affixed to one plate. In this tease, the mist frosts the direwolf marker over, as well as the marker for Denny's Unsullied forces, but unfortunately the Northern Army and the Unsullied are not going to be the only casualties for the living. It's confirmed that most of the Trekkie will fall as well, and then shortly after be brought back to life by the White Walkers to act as their minions. Here you can see the Trekkie Whites riding on horseback. What we cannot say for a fact, although it's been hinted by the official tease, is that Danny will at some point burn her former Trekkie loyalists. Here we can see the Trekkie marker being burned. Does that foreshadow Danny burning the Trekkie that fell during the battle for Winterfell? Maybe. After this epic battle of Winterfell, the Night King will conquer the North, and the living or at least what's left of them will have to retreat south, and once again parley with Cersei and Yorn. Anyways, in a span of 24 hours, we got two season 8 promos and one teaser, and they gave away far more than the trailer did. Not only do we know for a fact that Winterfell is definitely falling to the Night King, but in case you have not watched my last video, we also know where the living will retreat after this. One of the new teasers provided this shot of Danny standing in front of a fireplace, with her back turned to John, and details on that fireplace confirm that they are a dragonstone. Take a look at all the details on this shot, from the fireplace itself to its props, to stone curves and the metalwork. It's the very same thing we already saw at Dragonstone, so now we know they will retreat at Dragonstone in episode 4 after Winterfell falls to the Night King in episode 3. 
I hope you like this little breakdown and please let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comment section down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.